For as long as we've been making wallets, leather has been the go-to material. But this, this is not leather. This is fungi. Yeah, like mushrooms. And it isn't the only thing. This surfboard, also made out of it. So is this coffin, and these bricks to build houses, these lamps, and most recently, this fungal alternative set to rival bacon secured $11 million in funding. So I tasked my colleague Noel with sourcing it. You found it! Oh my gosh, okay, it looks like a mushroom. Fungi, or fungi root to be precise, are entering all sorts of industries that desperately need alternatives, and there's a pretty hefty reason why. We've built a world on materials that not only are a huge pollution and health problem, but are also running out. So bio-based materials are already in huge demand, and that demand is only getting bigger. Even governments are encouraging their use through new regulations. Sure, there are other alternatives like seaweed for plastic, or pineapple for leather, like in my shoe. <laughs> but somehow, mycelium has its fingers, or tendrils, in every pie. It's already grown globally to around a $3 billion market. So I have to ask, what makes fungi roots so good that it could replace everything? And is this really the material that will build our future? Or is it just another hyped up trend? Turns out fungi has been solving our problems for way longer than we realized. In the 60s, there was a widespread fear that the predicted growth in the world's population would lead to food shortages and famine, which got this very successful British industrialist working. He hired a team of scientists to find a microorganism that would deliver on texture, nutrition, and macros. They wanted a new kind of protein, an alternative to meat. And after years of research and 3,000 microorganisms taken from around the world, they found it in British soil, right around here. And once cultivated and processed by the Rank Hovis McDougall or RHM company, not only did it become a high protein, high fiber food, but it also looked like chicken muscle under the microscope. Within a decade, the UK Food Standards Committee called it microprotein and certified it for trade as food. In 1983, RHM formed a joint venture with a British chemical company and founded the brand Marlowe Foods to develop the product under the brand Corn. And in 1985, the first microprotein products were launched into the market. In the form of, of course, savory pies. What did you expect? We're in the UK. Today, all of corn products are powered by microprotein. I've been eating corn for years. Like, I never knew it was made out of microprotein. And it's been around since 1985. What is this thing? Well, upon my research, I learned two things. First is that these are not made of what we all recognize as mushrooms. They are mycelium, the fungi's root system. And why might mycelium be the material of the future? Well, it's the perfect combination of cheap and environmentally friendly. This is a box with all the things that I need to grow mycelium. And you know, mycelium breaks that organic matter and turns it into nutrient-rich soil. So one of the big claims in favor of mycelium products, mycelium material, is that it consumes a lot of waste that would otherwise go to landfill. So companies growing mycelium material use agricultural waste. And the amount they give it is just enough to feed it without leaving any of that waste behind. So they end up with this, blobs of pure mycelium. Okay. I'm going to try and grow a mycelium plant pot. No instructions. We might have encountered a problem because something tells me that all this white thing means that the mycelium has already grown. Quick note if you're confused, when you buy these kits, you get the wood chip inoculated with the mushroom spores. That means that the process is already kind of in motion. So as soon as you get the package, you have to start processing it yourself. Otherwise, that happens. <laughs> In 2007, the US company Ecovative saw an opportunity to expand mycelium beyond food. And they started with packaging. This is the second application of mycelium. Over the years, Ecovative expanded into all sorts of products and patents related to the cultivation and manufacturing of mycelium-based materials and products. In 15 rounds of funding, according to Traxon, Ecovative has raised $180 million. And some of that is going towards that fake bacon I made Noel by earlier. I am gonna be a tough critic here. I'm not gonna go easy on the my bacon. I'm getting some like smoke in the pan. Is that good? I don't know. <laughs> some really good color. Let me show you. Can you see that? Yeah. It looks good, right? It does look good. The flavor is very good. The texture, very good. I mean, obviously I can tell that it's not real bacon and I can also kind of tell that it's mushrooms. Really? Yeah. 
But as an alternative, I would absolutely eat this for breakfast. But again, these mycelium blobs have not just become a meat alternative for hungry vegans across the globe, or an alternative to packaging for companies to ship their products in. They've become a viable alternative for our economy's most polluting vices. How do they make this into handbags? Great <laughs> question! The basics of it, we know, is what I just told you. But how they actually do it is pretty shielded. And it makes sense. There's an undeniable truth that no matter where you stand, can't be denied. We've built a world and products that are a danger to the planet, ecosystems, and our own health. Most leather tanning uses dangerous chemicals that can pollute rivers and expose workers to carcinogens. Livestock farming accounts for around 14.5% of global greenhouse gas, and it is one of the leading causes of deforestation in the Amazon rainforest. Then conventional plastics are petroleum-based and can stay for hundreds of years in the environment, broken down into microplastics that harm marine life and potentially disrupt human hormones. And also, plastic is finite. Once we run out of fossil fuels, we run out of plastic too. So there's a real race to find renewable alternatives. In 2002, $2.2 billion went to startups working to replace synthetic, fossil fuel-based or animal-based products with biological alternatives. In this research by McKenzie, an organization that works to help decision-making in economic and business issues, they write, over the next 10 to 20 years, we estimate that these applications alone could have a direct economic impact of between two and four trillion dollars globally per year. Scientists are exploring everything from seaweed plastic to bacterial leather. But perhaps mycelium's biggest advantage against all of those is how fast it grows. And incredibly, it only takes a few days, which is exactly how long it took me to unpack my mycelium box. And this is what happened. Yo, it's got like the shape of the bag it came in. But if I break it down and put it in my mouth, do you think? Yo, this is hard. It's growing all across it. Mate, you better grow. You've got this. I've got high hopes. I think this guy's gonna survive. Before we do that, you might be wondering what other materials like mycelium could end up redefining entire industries. If you're thinking that way, you know that the real opportunity is in spotting these materials before they go mainstream. That's why we created a free playbook for entrepreneurs or investors on how to evaluate and invest in the next wave of super materials. Inside, you'll find a three-tier framework for investing depending on your capital available, and a list of promising materials with real opportunities, plus the barriers to adoption and how to solve them. If you want a complete guide on why these super materials are a once-in-a-generation opportunity, scan the QR code on the screen right now or download it in the description below. Now, back to my CM. It grew! So this is pretty light, way lighter than I thought it would be. And it grew in under seven days. But other than speed of production, what makes mycelium such an advantageous product? Hmm. Well, firstly, unlike this concrete pot and many other materials mycelium might eventually replace, my mycelium pot absorbed CO2 as it grew. So this thing simultaneously absorbs CO2 and transforms agricultural waste into something sturdy. Secondly, mycelium is incredibly versatile, so I made this hard thing, but you can also make this flexible thing or this edible thing. Honestly, this thing is everywhere. Mycelium can be engineered to have vastly different properties depending on the species, the substrate, and the growing conditions. Some mycelium products are naturally water resistant, which is great for leather. Perhaps the most exciting industry for the mycelium business right now, but more on that later. Another great property of some mycelium products is that it's fire retardant. That is a mycelium block and a propane torch. This will smoke a little bit, but it won't catch fire. That's why alongside meat, plastic and leather, mycelium has pushed its way into construction, not only as a building material in the form of bricks, but also as insulation. It can be grown into complex shapes without cutting, just by using a mold, which reduces a lot of waste, plus all of the waste that it's consuming as it's growing. And third, once its life cycle is completed, mycelium products can be composted in ordinary conditions, breaking down and enriching the soil rather than poisoning the ocean, the earth, and ourselves. To understand this property better, I spoke to Thibault and Olivier, co-founder and supporter of a business that makes mycelium surfboards. Yes, of course, out of all the things, I chose a surfboard company. Or would it start kind of like decomposing or like breaking down as you use it? That's a good question because you can be uh, frightened and uh, if you hear that your board is biodegradable. <laughs> but uh, in fact, yes, it will, it will take a long time to become uh, compostable because you still have the resin that will protect the boards. 
According to the New York Times, there's enormous potential here. The global leather goods market exceeded $400 billion in 2021 and is expected to surpass $720 billion by 2030. That's how big just one of the industries mycelium is entering is. As for the global mycelium leather market, it was valued at $54 million in 2024 and predicted to reach $285 million by 2033. This is in a report by Data Horizon Research. And the same is happening in other industries. In the world of packaging, the mycelium market was valued at around $85 million in 2024, and it's expected to more than double by 2034. But in that same article by the New York Times, an industry expert said that's way underestimated. They argue that these numbers don't capture how desperately consumers want these things and how good the technology has gotten. And it's the combination of this time in history, these qualities and the advancements in technology that give mycelium the potential to replace everything in the future. But there might be a catch. Right, so all the launches and the hype happened in 2023, but today, I'm struggling to find anything made out of mycelium leather. The website pages have been taken down, the products have been sold out. There's like the odd weird cap or really expensive wallet that you can still buy, but I'm struggling. And I don't understand how there's been so much investment in this but at the same time, there's no real thing in the world at the minute. Like there's a lot of hype, but then where is it? Like, where are the things? I spoke about this with Cos. They recently completed a successful round of crowdfunding, but... I'm curious about the challenges in making this. The scalability, being able to produce a large series of, of surfboards. This would be the main challenge. This is why Cos is trying to raise funds to buy the, the, the all the gear, devices, everything needed to, to produce large series. Cos grows its own mycelium. But Alan Street, a Croatian brand that launched a sold out collection of mycelium leather goods in 2022 and is launching a new one this autumn, sources its mycelium leather from a company called Microworks, which also sells material to a bunch of other companies. So scaling requires significant capital investment, but major investment is flowing into the development of biomaterials. I showed you a diagram earlier. One of the companies that raised $125 million in investments in 2022 was Microworks. Bolt Threads, however, another one of the big mycelium leather suppliers, the company that actually made the leather for this wallet that I showed you at the beginning, but also a Stella McCartney bag, Adidas trainers, didn't do as well and actually paused the production of its mycelium leather. According to internationalleathermaker.com, Bolt Threads secured more than $300 million in funding, but was not able to significantly scale its production to a necessary level. The pattern of scalability challenges seems pretty consistent across the board. Business folks call this the valley of death. It's that phase where startups risk running out of money before becoming sustainably profitable. The other big pie that mycelium has its tendrils in is packaging and the situation is kind of similar. Both IKEA and Dell have switched part of their packaging to mycelium packaging. Maybe not because it made more sense, but because they needed a more sustainable option. Dell started investing in mycelium packaging way back in 2011. And according to the packaging book, the cost wasn't initially competitive, but Dell's packaging team saw it as an investment in future economies of scale. So let's rewind for a second. Quan launched its first product in 1985. They've been at it for way longer than the other mycelium pioneers, two decades longer. They have a whole range of mycelium-based products and now sell in 20 countries. The thing is, we need this. We need an alternative to leather, plastic, and concrete. Be it because we'll run out of the raw material that we use to make them, or be it because regulations won't even allow such dangerous environmental health impacts, or even the public might eventually reject them. There are all sorts of products in the market right now. Meat, surfboards, coffins, bricks, leather, wallets, bags, trainers, sofas. And what all of them have in common is that they need more time. It's like what solar panels were in the 90s. Proven technology, clear benefits, but still working out how to make it economically viable at scale. So we could say that the mushroom empire is already doing what mycelium does best. Spreading its network, breaking down the old, and building something entirely new. Those old empires are falling in more than one way. My colleague John made a video about the self-inflicted downfall of luxury brands, so go check it out. But before you do that, download our free playbook on how to evaluate and invest in the next wave of super materials, and subscribe to the Hustle YouTube channel for more videos like this. Surpass. 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 All right. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs>